first of all, I'm going to show you these blue, this blue silicon mat. Now, I ordered these online. I will link them below. There's no affiliate links. It's just a mat that I've found that's great, um, especially for when you're doing your inking and you don't want to hold. I bought the one inch cubes, okay? Now, I find because I use the larger dobber, I have to hold the ink block to get the ink onto my dobber, right? Well, I bought these in the hope that it would be a non-slip situation, and it's perfect. You can see it works a dream. Um, I cut one of the mats down so that I could put a mat underneath my little inking box to stop that moving, and I then thought maybe I should put some on the inside, and that would stop the ink moving around in, in the tray, and it works perfectly. Okay, while I'm also, while we're just inking around the edges of my photo mats here, I just want to say that yes, my voice sounds terrible. I have not been yelling at children. <laughs> I, <coughs> I have laryngitis, so I'm trying my very best to get through this without coughing and sounding like utter crap to be quite frank um okay so here i'm showing you the teflon mats i've had a few people ask me where i got them from and because they're so easy you just slide them on slide them off um and i use them for my mixed media they i will also link them below i got them from craft online and they were on sale last week I'll see if they still are um now i want to okay so let let's just start this video has just jumped straight into full-on so this is a double page layout i'm using the aussie grunge paper from scrapbook fantasies i will link that below um i've also so what i've done is foolish on my behalf because i never if you know me at all i never ever ever okay there's a huge blank bit here that's going to work to my advantage um I always buy everything in twos, whether I'm grocery shopping, whether I'm, it, it is insane. It's a stupid OCD thing that I have. For some weird reason, I ordered one piece of 12 by 12 Aussie grunge paper. But I did not despair because when it arrived, what it actually was is, if you can see that inside square, inside that, was some cutter parts right so what i did was i cut you can see what i've done here right so i've gone with the border piece of wood i've trimmed a quarter inch around the outside so that's become one frame for one page and then the inside piece is the border for another page so it's got a white border around it then what i did was cut a one inch uh, sorry, a quarter inch border from the inside part of this. So essentially what I've got is two quarter inch borders on one page and a, what have I got? Um, I think it's three quarters of an inch around this page. Now, I have inked around my edges of my photo mats with ground espresso Distress ink. See, I'm going the butter menthols just to get through this. Like, it's just ridiculous. Um, I have been tested for COVID. I have been tested four times now. It is not COVID. It is laryngitis. And the worst part is I can't get in to see my doctor to get something to speed the healing process up. So, unfortunately, you may get a few videos here with my laryngitis voice. Um, it's really annoying. <laughs> i got to say, it's really annoying. But geez, I'm drinking some water. I'll tell you what, it's pretty good. Okay, so what am I scrapbooking about? Back in 2005, my 
older brother, I'm going to omit this story. I'm going to omit somebody out of this story who was also there with us. Um, what I'm going to tell you is my brother and my daughter and myself went on a holiday to um, South Australia and it was fantastic. It was a driving holiday and it was absolutely awesome and this was all before I met my husband. Um, my daughter is actually from a previous relationship and um, so we went along. Obviously my brother had a partner at that point who he's no longer with and subsequently I'm scrapbooking this event as my brother, myself and my daughter. I think, you know, in life things throw you curveballs and you got to roll with the punches because the photos are beautiful. So, and the time that I spent with my brother was amazing. So, um, and my daughter loves it. She goes, she absolutely loves it. Anyway, so this on the second page, so that was the first page. I'm not finished with it, but I've added my photos to it. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm creating what I do in my mini albums. And sometimes I do it when I have a lot of photos that I want to be larger photos. And I want them all on my page, all in my 12 by 12 album. So what I'm doing is I've actually created a flipper. Now, once I, now you can see it there. So it's kind of like a tip in, but it's kind of on steroids. <laughs> um, I do this quite a bit when I'm scrapbooking about if I've gone and there's been an event, you know, like we went to the Western Plains Zoo and I took all the different photos of the animals and I have since been back to Dubbo Zoo. Um, this was in 2005. But I specifically wanted to um, record this memory. So what I've done, I had these photos printed years ago. Um, and for whatever reason, I didn't get around to scrapbooking them. And now I want to get it all on paper. So what I've done is I've created one 12 by 12 layout. Now I have numbered, you can see numbers on here. The reason I've done that is because whenever you do this, and I'm not giving you measurements for this sort of thing, um, because everybody's different and everyone's going to cut things slightly differently. Um, most of these photos are, they're 10 centimetres by, what were they, 10 centimetres by nine and a half I think they were that's what the majority of them are with a slight sliver off here and there which is roughly three by four okay did you see what I just did then okay I've got a, a magnet you might want to rewind that to see the easiest possible way to put a magnet onto a page I am using magnets to hold these clothes closed because um that's what I do in my mini albums and it works a treat so does it damage the photos no i have not ever had a photo damaged by these magnets sorry i need to take a drink um okay um sorry about that so all of these photos as you can see they're nice close up they're crystal clear that's why i wanted to scrapbook them specifically with that particular animal there which is called a mountain taper ta taper I don't know how to pr pronounce it. It's a mountain, T-A-P-I-R. Um, and they're very endangered. So as are the rhinoceros, as are the African elephants. Hence why all of these needed to be documented. Now, so what I've done is I've numbered the photo. So I'm just joining up the corresponding number with the corresponding photo. That way I know I've got the right one with the right border all the way around. I went around all of these with Grand Espresso 
and what else? Um, okay, sorry, I've got sidetracked then. Um, so once I get all these down, this, I know I'm going to get asked this. How long did it take you to work this all out? Okay, because I make mini albums as well, I sort of have a bit of a process that I do to make these flip in and flip out bits and pieces. So I think it's here I zoom you out. That's not to see all my rubbish sitting everywhere, how it's all cluttered. The reason I did that is so you can actually see both pages together. Now, what's in my working in tray is the things that I've cut out. Oh, sorry. <laughs> this is me asking my daughter to give me a hand. She came in the room, so I couldn't get the bag that the little flare came in. <laughs> I couldn't get it open. <coughs> sorry. I really wanted to use that frame. Oh, I'm so frustrated I didn't buy two. So that frame would have been perfect if I trimmed it a little bit more and it would have gone around. If I had two, I would have loved that. Don't worry. Don't despair. Wait till you see what I did. I love it. It turned out so good. Okay. So the flare, this is me just, what do we call this? Um auditioning <laughs> where I want things to go um, I did cut out so those are actually two extra photos that is an albino wallaby and a baby giraffe that at the time was a newborn giraffe which was really cool um, so I ended up putting in this is me trying to work out this this is the hardest part about all of this would you believe working out what colors I wanted to use through a stencil on my paper because all I've used is plain white cardstock. No, there's been no um, additional anything on there. there. There's no texture. There's no, I've used the one 12 by 12. I did buy the cutter parts and I think I used two animals, maybe three. I think I used two animals out of the cutter parts. That's it. The rest of it was all from this one sheet, which again, I'm going to say, Alicia Redshaw does an amazing job with getting all the, you can literally use the entire sheet of paper. Um, so if money's tight and you want to do a beautiful big spread like this, my cream paper, sorry, I need another drink or I'm going to cough again. Gee, this is annoying. Sorry, I really apologise. You don't want to listen to my croaky voice or my coughing or my drinking or whatever. Um, please just mute me because this turns out so well. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so I made the decision. I'm just doing it. I'm going for it. So I'm using old paper and then I come in with bundled sage on top. Um... And I'm just using the world's oldest stencil. I think I got this stencil about six or seven years ago. Six, five, I couldn't tell you. Um, I think I bought it from, it was one of those bundles that you could buy from Wish, um, wish.com. Um, and I bought a stack of different stencils. Just wanting to increase my supply, blah, blah, blah. I use them a lot with paint, but now I have all my distress inks. <laughs> They're coming back out again. So this one's just got little leaves. It's like a leaf shape with little tiny, it's like, sort of reminds me a bit of a palm frong sort of thing. So I wanted to go around and create a heavier inked border in between, obviously where I've removed that piece. And put on the other page because I think just because you only have minimal supplies of a collection this is something I'm truly truly passionate about you do not necessarily <laughs> I forgot to put my Teflon mat under me whoops 
you know how many times I've done that with my pink cutting mat? My self-healing mat? I do it all the time. I swear to God, I'm shocking for it. I think this is about my third, fourth, possibly fifth cutting mat. I've been through two creative memories ones. The reason I got the reason I've moved those on is because they went really hard. And yeah, but great product. They're just like 16, 17 years old. That's all it was. Anyway, but I digress. I'm having a bit of a squirrel here. I really am. But something I want to let you know about that I'm quite passionate about. When you're a scrapbooker, you do not need to buy all of the everything. You don't need to get the lot. When I started scrapbooking, I felt like I had to buy every tool, every color, every pencil, every different type of glue there was. I felt that I had to do that. Can I stress to any newbies on here or even people, veteran scrapbookers, you don't need to buy everything. This page has come together with one 12 by 12, one piece of flare and white, white 12 by 12 cardstock that I got from Amazon and it was $14 for, I think it, no, it wasn't. It was the really cheap one. It was $2.99. And the reason I'm using it on this background is because it's, it is so cheap that it, when I put it in my Cricut and I use it with my Cricut, it doesn't come up off the sticky mat very well because it's a bit thin. It doesn't have the structural integrity. But to do this with it, it's perfectly fine. This stuff works out at 15 cents a sheet. 15 cents. Like, would I buy it again personally because I use my Cricut a lot? Probably not. But because I buy my other papers in bulk, but this, for what I'm using it for here, it's perfect. Absolutely, absolutely brilliant. Now, um, so obviously, yes, I have my distress inks. I do have every single color in the distress inks. I will put that out there. I haven't had that my entire scrapping career though. I have literally only just purchased all those in the last couple of months. And that's why I have the one inch cubes because um, I didn't want to shell out the price for the giant ones. And in my mind, if I can buy all the colors in a one inch cube and then buy the reinkers for the ones that I use the most, hey, I'm winning. I'm coming out in front. I've got all the colours at my service. And yeah, I, I that's just that's just me. I you know, and it's working for me. So if that's something that you think that you might want to do, I've never subscribed to um you know like the large chains that do um what do they call it? your kits, you know, um, I've never subscribed to that. I have purchased, um, from new uniquely creative. I have purchased majority of a kit. Um, but something I always look for in a kit or in a, in a collection is a piece of, uh, at least one piece of paper that I can fussy cut or I can die cut or I can put in my Cricut and do something different with. I always try and think outside the box when it comes to purchasing my papers. Now, something I wanted to mention, this is me contemplating. I apologize, I am there, I promise I am. Um, so what I decided to do here was bring in bundled sage over the top. Not to make it cluttered, just to give a depth of a different coloured leaf. And boy, I was happy I did because, geez, it looks good. 
Um, now, what was I going to say? I'm losing my mind. The blending brushes that I'm using, I got from Amazon. They were Amazon, sorry, Amazon AU. Whenever I discuss Amazon for my overseas friends, I do mean Amazon.au um, because obviously I'm in Australia. I'm down under. So, um, and I do realize that Amazon US is a little different. So, basically, um, I got those brushes from Amazon. I, I'm just reading through my list to make sure that I've mentioned everything I wanted to mention. Um, okay, I did that, I did that. Okay, and I'm doing my inking all the way around. Now, I have left, I have not edited anything out. Okay, I have left this whole process in. I have sped it up four times. Just so you know, except for the very last where I'm showing you, I leave that at normal speed, but everything else has been sped up four times. I do, so when I'm doing my videos, I plan out what I'm going to do. I get everything trimmed and cut down because that's all the boring stuff. And then I video all the fun stuff. Um, because who wants to sit and watch someone cut out squares? It's not very exciting. Um, but I did want to let you know that I did leave everything in. And it's, yeah, I'm, I'm so... I know I don't sound excited. If I make my voice go up, I lose my voice. So I have to stay a little bit monotone with this voiceover. And I, for that, I cannot apologize enough. The other thing I wanted to mention, I have also made, you can see it up there in the top right corner with the red checks on it. I have made a more simplified, straightforward forward version of my little trays that I make. I know I did one the other day and it was really big and I didn't realize when I was videoing it that it was going to look so clunky. I know I've had lots and lots of views on that particular video. I am going to upload another video probably after this one um, and it's got a much more straightforward go of it. it so it's not as difficult to understand because I did sort of squirrel a bit with the other video um okay so I'm just about finished so what I'm doing here well I'm just about finished with the, the ink anyway now these brushes if you have arthritis I have um neg rheumatoid arthritis in all my joints and I struggle sometimes with brushing and inking and all the rest of it. So these brushes are great. They're so easy. They're really good. Okay, so I typed out my journaling. Um, now, this is me trying the Nuvo, what's it called? Nuvo Deluxe Adhesive. I have never used it before. I bought it because a few people had mentioned it and said, give it a go. You'll love it. I am an art glitter glue person from my album making side of things when it comes to a wet glue. It has a huge, or oh, it has an amazing bond. Now, what did I notice straight away about the, and this is for my Australian friends. Um, I'm in Queensland, so what I know, you did notice I went straight back to the art glitter glue. Okay, the reason why I did that is because the art glitter glue gives me an instant bond. When I'm ready to glue something down, I'm ready to go, bam, it's down. What I noticed with the Nuvo, if you're not as confident and if you are a new scrapper, go the Nuvo because it gives you wiggle room. It actually gives quite a bit of wiggle room, to be honest. Um... Now, I don't use flare very often, so my She'll Be Right Mate flare, I did put some tape under it and I did use my art glitter glue. 
I'm not sure what the Nuvo Deluxe is like at holding metal, but I do know that the Art Glitter Glue holds the metal perfectly. It doesn't budge. Nothing moves with that stuff. It is amazing. And it dries clear, the same as the Nuvo. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with the Nuvo. I will continue to use it. Probably not when I'm gluing down chunky embellishments. Um, I think paper to paper, the Nuvo, I'll be happy to use because I, I don't even know if it's really cheaper. It cost me, um, cost me about $10 for that bottle. And just looking at the bottle now, that's $10 for 60 mil or two fluid ounces. So that's the same pro. Okay. So it's dearer actually. The Art Glitter Glue, you can buy a two ounce bottle, 60 mil bottle. Um, and I can get that for $8 something so but I buy it in bulk so it's even cheaper again and I just fill up my bottle so there's my squirrel about glue <laughs> um I wanted to try it though because so many people are using it and I thought maybe it's an awesome thing that I'm missing out on so I gave it a go I'll continue to use it I do not have an issue with it I just in this particular instance went to my tried and true that I knew would work so I don't know why I put that on I, I do know I put glue behind that as well as the tape purely and simply because I'm putting it on top of mixed media and even though I'm using the easy tape runner I am just making sure that it doesn't react and let go down the track um okay so now i'm just gluing down the kangaroo now these hexagons they were also in the center of the paper i've just cut them so the ones that are behind so there's some behind the wallaby and some in front of the wallaby uh and i then i put some just for interest just so the page didn't look so blank and it worked a treat i put down my journaling happy with that my now I normally leave my journaling to the very end but I thought I'd put it in here purely because I think the page just didn't look finished without the journaling on there now okay the last thing that I do on these pages is I have stamps now they're lawn fawn stamps I can tell you that and they Oh, it's called Push Here Lawn Fawn Stamps. I bought them ages ago. I use them in my mini albums all the time. Absolutely love them. And they have, the stamps are so good. They've got Push Here, Pull Here, um, Press Me, a Slide, Arrows. It's got a finger pointing, Lift the Flap, Slide Me. All these stickers, all these stamps that you can use over and over and over again. And I just use my VersaFine Black Onyx um, ink. And that, I find, gives me a beautiful, crisp stamp. And it works beautifully. Now, because of the... This is where I do the stamping. Now, you can see my working in tray up the top. When I cut around the hexagons, the paper that was around it is the Aussie grunge paper now don't throw that stuff straight in the bin because look at this it's the tiniest little piece of this is me going away and finding my stamps and then I realized I should probably just show you how I store my stamps so this is how I store my stamps one of my homemade boxes I use the um I use the plastic sleeves Again, I buy them from Amazon, but that's Amazon US. Um, and yeah, so, and I keep all my stamps in order and I put a piece of white, cheap, cheap white card stock in the back. Um, and it works beautifully. So I just test the stamp on something else. Perfect. 
and then I just pop it on there. Now I know I need two because I need to. The reason I'm putting this on here is so when readers are reading through my scrapbook, they know that, oh, this says, this says pull here. Why does it say pull here? And they pull it and realize there's a heap of photos underneath. Um, so, yeah, that's why I do this. And these are my new Tim Holtz scissors. I got these from, they were just recently restocked at Crazy Craft Obsessions, another small Aussie company. And they, these scissors, wow, I'm buying all the Tim Holtz scissors now because my favorite pair of large scissors is nearly dead and it's just not quite cutting as crisply as I like so I will be purchasing more of those scissors because these little ones they are so good and look how big the holes are that's what drew me in see those little black ones off to the side I've had those for 15 years. They're still sharp. They still work. They're still okay. But they're not great. I still like my little We Are Memory Keepers ones. They're good. And I bought those while I was waiting for the Tim Holtz ones to arrive. Because I'm just like that. I spontaneously buy things I don't really need. I've got... I'll be honest with you. I've got so many tools. When I buy something now, it's because I've... I'm spoiling myself, not because I need it, really. Okay, so I add these two on, and then I go ahead and do a close-up for you. In total on this, I was going to staple that, and I stopped myself because I realised the metal, and I'm stapling through photos, that's not going to work long-term, so I didn't do it. I know that they're not going to go anywhere. I just wanted the metal on there, to be honest. Okay, so I'm just going to do the close-ups for you now. So if you would like to subscribe to my channel, I would seriously appreciate that. Um, you can see that top flare I haven't glued down in the close-up, but I do straight after this. Um, and if you would like to subscribe to my channel, like my video, that would seriously help me out. I'm trying to get myself out there and I'm trying to find like-minded people scrappy people that like to do scrapbooking i like to show you different ways of doing things i scrap a little bit different to the way people do at the moment so hopefully you like my channel and you stick around with us little creatives and by all means please leave me a comment if you liked it if you didn't like it hopefully my voice hasn't been too annoying and you haven't just closed it all down um and yeah so I'm just going to show you how it all flips out and you can see all the photos I know there's a bit of glare I apologize for that my fluoros my fluoro uh, my leds they're so bright which is great it gives me lots of light to be able to see what I'm doing however does kind of create reflection on photos that aren't matte photos that's why I print them matte now then I don't get this problem <laughs> so please like and subscribe I would seriously appreciate that and here I'm just showing you that the magnet that's what the magnets do they just hold it shut so and I just cut my plastic sleeve to go over the top of them and I cut the square out where you pull them out and put it on top of the photo. Thanks guys, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.